Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. We are all going to read that verse of the scripture together, just verse 5 for now. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. I have it on the screen, and I can wait for you to open it. If you want to open it on your device, on your Bible, whichever one you want, because we are going to read it together, and you are going to profess it for yourself, because we are still celebrating Jesus. We are still celebrating Easter. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. Can we read together as church? Let's read. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. How many of you have the mind of Christ? Let's put our hands together once again for ourselves. Now turn to your neighbor and ask your neighbor, do you have the mind of Christ? There's a lot to do with neighbors today. So if that neighbor is not cooperating, there is room to relocate. <laughs> Praise the Lord. When we talk of having the mind of Christ, having the mind of Christ just make you a mini Jesus. Having the mind of Christ just make you like a replica of Jesus. Having the mind of Christ makes it possible that we have so many Jesuses in us today. So, if we all profess we have the mind of Christ, and you have asked your neighbor, I don't know that response, but I could see smiling faces, and I guess it was a yes. That means your neighbor is also having the mind of Christ. How many Jesus do we have in us today? Praise the Lord. The mind of Christ. This morning, I'll be speaking on what I titled the mind of Christ. And we are going to see the mind of Christ are based on Easter, the death and the resurrection of Jesus. We are going to see what was going through the mind of Christ during this period. And we are going to reflect it on ourselves. And at the end of the day, I'll pose the same question. Do you still have the mind of Christ? Now, Philippians 2, I'll be reading verse 5 to verse 9. Philippians 2, verse 5 to verse 9. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. Tell someone, no reputation. Taking the form of a bond servant. Tell someone, bond servant. And coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross, verse 9, which is the last for 9. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name. I will exploit the mind of Christ on three perspectives. The first aspect is the mind of Christ in humility. The mind of Christ in humility. The place where Jesus was coming from was the place that the Bible described that the streets are tied with gold. The place where Jesus was coming from was a place where he had all the authority because the scripture says he was equal to God, but he never counted this. In terms of humility, Jesus did not count himself equal with God. In fact, in that scripture we read, the Bible says he saw himself as of no reputation and took the form of a bound servant. You know, there's a difference between a servant and a bound servant. A servant, sometimes servant can still work and get wages and get paid, but a bound servant had nothing. A bond servant is sold to death. A bond servant had nothing. Jesus 
humbled himself to the point of death. If I ask the Jesus in house today, how long can you go with this your reputation? How much can you drop from this reputation that you have? I really do not know what you might have acquired, but I know what Jesus left in heaven is greater more than whatsoever you have acquired. But despite this achievement, the Bible says Jesus humbled himself. He left his throne. He left his kingdom and came down here to be crucified for the sin he did not commit. Now that you have professed that you have the kind of mind of Jesus, can I ask you how much you can let go of yourself? Imagine as you step into the hall this morning, one of the ushers mistaking you for someone else, and gave you a mopping stick and say, start mopping this floor. I don't know what your Jesus reaction will be. Imagine as you were dropping in your car, the protocol man outside said, oh, bro, sorry, I have much to do out here. Can you join me to control the traffic? I can imagine what your Jesus reaction will be. Imagine if one of the least usher come in and say there are space at the front. Why not move forward? I can imagine what your Jesus reaction will be. In the place of honor, in the place of dignity, Jesus had it all. But the Bible says he counted himself of no reputation. Having the mind of Christ is a mind that does not count achievements. Having the mind of Christ is the mind that counts it all for nothing, for the sake of the kingdom. Taking the form of a bound servant and obedient to the point of death. If I ask you how obedient are you, when I talk of obedient, I'm talking of obedience to the scripture, to the word of God, not any other form of obedience that you might be thinking of. Praise the Lord. How obedient are you to the word of God? How much can you forego what you have achieved for the sake of the kingdom? I don't know if this illustration is appropriate for you. If you are asked to leave everything, and maybe go to a far country for the sake of the gospel. How obedient are you? The place where you are is good. Jesus left the street of gold to be crucified. The first thing we can see in the mind of Christ through his death was that he humbled himself. He humbled himself. Matthew chapter 27, verse 27 to 31. As so I go to the next point. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the proterium and gathered the whole garrison around him. And they stripped him and put a scarlet of robe on him. When they had twisted a crown of thorn. They put it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And they bowed the knee before him and mocked him. Tell someone they mocked him. They mocked him and saying, Hail the king of the Jews. Then they spat on him. Tell someone they spat on him. They spat on him and took they read and struck him on his head. Wow. And when they had mocked him, 
They took the robe off him, put his on clothes on him, and led him away to be crucified. Another thing we can see from the mind of God through his death is enduring trials of faith. Enduring trials of faith. He never committed any sin. However, the Bible says they strip him. They strip him. But Jesus endured it because there is a kind of mind that he possessed. Not that alone. They mocked him. They mocked him. But Jesus endured it. They spat on him. Jesus endured it. And ultimately, he was crucified. And he endured it. Now that you have professed that you have the same mind of Christ, how much of trial can you endure before you throw it off and say Christianity does not even worth it? How much of trial can you endure before you resort into blackmail? When I say blackmail, blackmailing God. You know, sometimes you just go and say, God, with all these things I have done for you, this is what you will use to pay me. That is blackmail. Because you might be thinking you have done much. Look at how much Jesus did compared to how much you are doing. You will know you have not done. There is no much in your doing. There is no much in your doing. I don't know how much you can endure in this journey of faith. Because you have professed that you have the kind of mind of Jesus. Maybe trials. Maybe temptations. Maybe situations that want to mock you. Maybe situations that want to strip you. I don't know how much spit you can endure before your Jesus flare up. Before you now say, I will go back to my, if I show my real color, Jesus does not have color A, color B, color C, color D. It was just the Jesus and the Jesus. If you have the mind of Jesus, then you should have the mind of enduring trials and temptation. Jesus endured it even on the cross. I don't know what your marriage has thrown to you. But if the husband is Jesus and the wife is Jesus, you can endure it. You can sustain in this journey. I don't know what you might be passing through. Maybe you have been stripped mentally or whichever way. Maybe you have been mocked physically, verbally, or any other form. Jesus passed through the same. But Jesus endured it. How much spit can you endure? You know, sometimes we say, they step on my toes. How much stepping on toes can you endure before your Jesus flare up? The mind of Jesus. Luke chapter 23, verse 32 and 34. The first one was humility. The second one, trial of faith. The third one was forgiveness. The mind of Jesus. Dear what there were also two others, criminals, led with him to be put to death. And when they had come to the place called Calvary, there they crucified him, and the criminals on the other on the right hand and the other on the left. Then Jesus said, Father, Forgive them, for they do not know what they do. And they divided his garment and cast lots. Despite everything that he passed through, I, think I can imagine being flogged. I can imagine being stripped. I can imagine being, being mocked, being spat on. And there was no time to think and say, just give me time. Let me just think on what you guys have done. And let's see if we can still continue this relationship. Even on that spot, why criminals were mocking him? 
The Bible says, Jesus said, Lord, do not count this on them. Forgive them. What a mind. I think if all the Jesus we have actually possess this kind of mind, Christianity will be worth dying for. The mind of Jesus in the place of forgiveness. I don't know how much you have bottled. Dear Jesus in house today, forgive. I don't know how much you have been mocked. You have been stripped. Maybe you are just a victim. Jesus was. But he forgave them. Dear Jesus in house today, forgive. You know, uh, just last Wednesday, for those who were not part of the Bible study, just last Wednesday we were treating forgiveness and the, our teacher then said a lot about forgiveness. And she mentioned that forgiveness is not about the offender. It's not about the other fellow. It's because of you for your own sake. And I could see the mind of Jesus on the cross when they were telling him so many things, mocking him, Jesus gazed his focus on heaven, on his father. And he said, I will not allow you to distract me. And he knew that unforgiveness can stand as a barrier. Imagine everything he has done in his ministry. And just the last day of that ministry, he bottled something. It would have been in vain. And Jesus pushed everything aside and said, Lord, forgive them because I have a gaze I have a focus, I have a target, I have a purpose. Dear Jesus in house today, I don't know how long or whatsoever has mocked you, whosoever has stripped you, whosoever has spat on you or stepped on your toes. Dear Jesus, forgive and face your gaze on heaven. The one that called you, Jesus forgave them. He was humiliated. He was treated like criminals. In fact, criminals mocked him. Despite all this, Jesus forgave them. What a mind. What a mind. I pray you will have this kind of mind indeed. In the name of Jesus. And do you know that sometimes we, we appropriate the blessings in what Jesus has done. Romans chapter 8 Verse 16 to 17. Romans 8, 16 to 17. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. In fact, a version of the Bible calls us joint heirs with Christ. That is, we have the same inheritance just like Jesus did. And if children, then heirs and heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ... If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Now, we always speak the aspect of the glory. We want to be glorified together. We want to enjoy the benefits of the kingdom. But here the scripture says, if we indeed suffer with him, then we can be glorified together. The suffering of faith does not mean the absence of Jesus. Sometimes it is blessings in disguise. It is blessings in disguise. There is a glory ahead. I tell you, Christianity will not end here on earth. It won't. We will still see ourselves again and say, Oh, bro, sister, you made it. There is a glory ahead. However, there is a kind of suffering. And thank God for a time like this that brought the remembrance of what Jesus passed through. That, version, that uh, scripture we read in Philippians 2, the verse 9 of it says, God exalted his name. The exaltation came after the suffering. The exaltation came after he passed his test. After he exhibited a kind of trait. After he exhibited a kind of mindset and heaven said, wow, there is a standing ovation for him because he passed his test. 
I'm trusting God that whatsoever is thrown at you, you will pass it in the name of Jesus. The suffering of faith means there is a glory ahead. Tell your neighbor, there is a glory ahead. As I conclude, I want to bring out two points. Romans chapter 7, verse 18 to 20. Romans chapter 7, Romans chapter 7, verse 18 to 20. For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, nothing good dwells. For to will is presence with me. That is, I am eager to do things. But how to perform what is good, I do not find. For the good that I will to do, I do not do. But the evil I will not to do, that I manifest. That I practice. Now, if I do what I will not do, not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but sins that dwells in me, the basic hindrance to exhibiting the mind of God is found in this scripture. There is a daily contention for the soul of man. There is a part of you that actually carries the mind of God and you are willing to do things. You have the eagerness. In fact, you want to do it. But the Bible says, as much as I try to do it, I find it difficult to do. However, there are some things that I do not really want to do, but naturally, I just find myself doing them. Those ones, I don't need to struggle to. You don't need to struggle to keep malice. Naturally, it just come. You don't need to struggle to yell. Naturally, it just come. There are some things that the mind of Christ really wants you to do, but you find it difficult to do. And the last phrase in that Romans chapter 7 verse 20 says, but sins that dwells in me. The contention between the soul of man, the spirit of God is contending and the devil is contending. And to whomever you yield, you become slave. And the reason why it, is, it seems difficult to practice the mind of Christ in humility is because the other aspect has gained more grounds. The reason why it is difficult to practice the mind of Christ in enduring trials is because the other aspect has gained ground. The reason why it is difficult to practice the mind of Christ in the place of forgiveness is because the other aspect has gained ground. It's just like you have two spirits contending and you decide to feed one and you starve one and unfortunately the one you starve is the one that will not strive with you the one that will not force himself on you the one you yield yourself to now took over however there is a part of you that is willing to do the will of God Say, I just know there is a part of me that carries the mind of Christ. But I can't do it. I can't do it. In the scripture we read, verse 18 says, that which I am willing to do, I find it difficult to do. But the other one that I don't even want to do, that is what I practice. That is what I manifest. I don't know the spirit you are feeding. But I tell you, the spirit you are feeding is the one that is manifesting. Is the one that easily jump out. The mind of Christ, in most cases, it has been suppressed in us as believers. Excuse me, Jesus in us today. If I pick your phone and we plug it and decide to see the pictures 
on your phone. I am sure it will not depict Jesus. If they want to look at the 10 songs you listen to last, and they decide to plug it on the screen here for everybody to see, I am sure it will not depict Jesus. If it is possible to record the phone calls, I'm still dwelling on phone, the phone calls you have, the last 10 people you called, and the discussions you had with them, some for a prolonged time, I am sure if we can record it and tap, we don't tap into the phone here, unlike, uh, praise the Lord, we don't tap into people's phone here. If we can record it and play it here, I am sure it will not depict Jesus. You don't know that by those things you do, invariably you are feeding the flesh. By the places you go, by the things you see, by the things you do consciously or unconsciously, you are feeding the flesh and thus starving the spirit. You have a house and two visitors or you have two sons or two children, whichever way, and you decide to give one sumptuous meal. And the other one, hardly, hardly do you give five minutes attention. I'm sure the one you give out of the 24 hours, the one you give all the time, will definitely be your friend. If you don't give time to the things of God, you will suppress the mind of God in you. We all have it. We all have it. There is a conscience in you that tells you that there is a spirit of God in me. However, the scripture says, sin suppressed it. I'm going to conclude with these two verses of the scripture today. As we pray, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33 to 34. The mind of Christ. So that the death of Christ will not just be in vain. The death of Christ should be a time of remembrance that no... If Jesus can do it, and I am also equal heirs with him, I should be able to do it. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 33 to 34. Do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. If I interpret this scripture, just keep it, I'm still reading 33 and 34. If I interpret this scripture very well, the Bible says, evil company can corrupt good habit. That means the good habit is there. However, the file is what? Ah, I thought we all know computer. The file is what? It's corrupted. And if you ask the IT people here, if you want to load a corrupt file, we just keep getting error. Error and error. That is why it is difficult to practice the mind of Christ because that file has been what? Has been corrupted. The next verse, the next verse, please. Awake to righteousness and do not sin. I read this scripture and I pondered on the word awake to righteousness. I know uh, Dickin was praying uh, concerning righteousness this morning. Awake to righteousness. Awake to righteousness. Awake to righteousness. This kind of scripture can come to someone that is sleeping in righteousness. This kind of scripture can come because there is a possibility to sleep in righteousness. That means righteousness is there, but that righteousness has been put to coma. It has been put to death. And the scripture says the only way to conquer the flesh, the only way to conquer sin is to awake to righteousness. Tell your neighbor, awake to righteousness. Now ask that neighbor, do you still have the mind of Christ? <laughs> the mind of Christ is a mind of humility. The mind of Christ is a mind that endures trial. The mind of Christ is a mind of forgiveness. If there is nothing, let this season be a time to remind you that if you have been sleeping in righteousness, it is time to awake. Why not bow down your heads and begin to speak to Christ today? What I have been sent, I have delivered. Brethren, I am speaking to myself as well. 
Why not speak to him? So that the death of Christ will not just be in vain. Most times, we use the death of Christ to claim victory. There is power in the blood, yes. I know victory comes through the crucifixion, yes. But however, there is a path of suffering before the aspect of glory can manifest. There is a path, the Bible says, if indeed we suffer with him, then we will also be glorified with him. I know we want to be glorified. I know we want to be settled. However, there is a path of suffering with him. Why not tell the Lord and say, Lord, give me your mind. Help me to nurture your mind in me. Help me to be awake in righteousness. Help me, help me, Lord. Help me to exhibit humility. Most of the trying faith we have here today is that the mind of God in the aspect of humility is gone. That's why it is hard. When it is time to move forward, it takes the pastor alone to move you forward. That is why it is hard. When it is time to do some things, it takes, it takes grace for you to do it. Because you carry your reputation. You come even to his presence with yourself. Why not tell him and say, Lord, give me the grace. Give me the grace to possess your mind today. Give me the grace to exhibit your mind today. I don't know the trial of faith you are passing through. I don't know the burden that you carry. But I tell you, Jesus passed through same. And Jesus endured it. What are you passing through for the sake of the gospel? What is that thing that has mocked you? What are those things that have stripped you? Are there areas of life that you feel that you have been spat on? Jesus endured it. It is grace that you need. Say, Lord, help me. Give me the grace. In the place of forgiveness, despite all that was done to him, Jesus forgave. And if I have the mind of Christ, I should be able to forgive. Why not tell him and say, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Are you part of that scripture? Am I part of that scripture in Romans chapter 7, 18 to 20 that says, the things I would love to do, I don't naturally do them. But the things that I hate to do, those are the things that I do naturally. That is the absence of the mind of Christ. Why not tell him and say, Lord, help me. Help me so that I will feed your mind. So that I will feed upon your mind. If you want to get a mirror of the mind of Christ, you have to, if you want to see your image in a mirror, you have to behold the mirror. I present Jesus to you as the mirror. The more you behold him, the more you begin to see yourself through him. Why not begin to tell him, Lord, help me to awake. Help me to awake. Help me to awake in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Shall we rise up on our feet? I want you to commit your going out today unto the hands of the Lord. Why not speak to the Lord and say, Father, as I go today, be the prophet. Do you have interview? Do you have one challenges? Do you have one obstacles? Do you have something that you want to come back next week and come back in testimony? Why not speak with him today and say, Lord, help me. And I know this is a time of the crucifixion. And I tell you, it's a time of power. Speak to him today and say, Lord, you will empower me as I go in this week. I go in righteousness. I go in strength. The scripture says, I can do all things through Christ that strengthen me. Every form of limitations I break today. I break limits in the name of Jesus. I break boundaries. I break barrier. I go in strength. I go in grace. I go in might in the name of Jesus. Why not begin to speak to your home? Let the hand of Christ be upon my family. Let the hand of God be upon me today. In the name of Jesus. I receive safety. I receive grace to do exploit. I receive grace to be kept in the name of Jesus. I receive grace to come back with testimony. I receive grace to come back with good news that the death of Christ will work for me in the name of Jesus. Thank you, blessed Redeemer. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Father, I join my faith with your sons and daughters today and I stand in the place of authority that as you go this week, you will go ahead of us in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, we pray, Lord, is there anyone that is sick? We receive divine healing for them in the name of Jesus. Whatsoever be your challenge, whatsoever be your problem, in the place of job, in the place of immigration, I decree the hand of God be upon you today in the name of Jesus. You will come back testify. You will come back rejoicing in the name of Jesus. So shall it be in the name of the Father, 
in the name of the Son and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Let somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. 